Hey guys, I'm Rob Yonkers. I'm a fashion and costume designer with 20 plus years of experience, an educator and lover of all things DIY. That's why I'm so excited to introduce you to ThreadyMade. ThreadyMade kits bring you New York City Garment District insider access that you've never had before. ThreadyMade pleating and smocking kits are going to allow you to create things that you've never been able to make at home before and they're gonna be key pieces in your new wardrobe. The great thing about these kits, they're accessible to people of all skill levels as far as sewing goes, and we cater to all shapes and sizes, so ThreadyMade is very inclusive. The other fun part, we're gonna show you the steps to create these pieces, but we also wanna know what you would do with them, how to put your own creative touch on them. So are you guys excited to start sewing? I'm gonna walk you through all the steps. Ready, set, go. The sunburst pleated skirt kit is one of my favorites. I absolutely love sunburst pleating. I think it's classic, timeless. You'll see it in the past, you'll see it in the future, and now you're gonna make your own. So, this kit comes with everything you need to create one of three waistband options. Your first is exposed elastic. This is super on trend, the contrast color is really cool, and it's also the simplest to put together as your kit comes with the elastic waistband already sewn on for you. The intermediate version is the tunnel elastic. So again, it's a pull-on style, but we've created this waist, so you're covering the waistband elastic in the same fabric as the skirt, it sort of just disappears. And the experienced sewer's skirt is the more classic tailored fixed waistband. So this is a non-stretch waistband. It's gonna fit really perfectly on your body. We're gonna measure to make sure. And this goes on and off with an invisible side zip. So, to walk through the kit contents. Everything that you need to create one of these styles is already in your kit. You're going to receive your sunburst pleated panel. As I mentioned, it already comes with the exposed elastic sewn on if you wanna do a really quick going out tonight kind of project, throw something together in an hour. It comes a little bigger than you need, we're gonna cut it down to size. There are two pieces of fabric cut for waistbands. One is the fabric itself. You can see it's really soft, just the simple fabric. And this is what we would use for the tunnel elastic version as opposed to the much stiffer fused piece. So this has fusible on the back. You'll be able to tell because this one has no give with the fusible interfacing. And this one's just the soft piece. So this fusible interfacing is applied by just being ironed on and it's gonna give that waist the body it needs for the fixed waistband, which has no stretch in it. Also for your tunnel elastic, you have your plain white elastic that will get inserted through the tunnel. And to finish off, the fixed waistband. You're gonna have the invisible zipper and these adorable little hook and eyes which will close off that side seam. So before making your skirt, we have to measure for your skirt. My suggestion is to measure your waist wearing something that you love. So this is Tiffany. Hi Tiff. Hi. So Tiff, you're wearing these jeans and you told me before that you really like where the waistline sits on these jeans. So this is a really great way you guys to capture that measurement is to look at something that exists in your closet. So all I need you to do and you guys at home is get a tape measure. So Tiff, you're just going to wrap this around the waistband of your jeans and meet in the front, drop it down a little bit. Okay, so we're at 28. This feels like a comfortable spot. Yeah, sure. Okay, cool, so I'm gonna take that measurement to the table and pin up the sample. 
So for the fixed waistband, make sure you're using the piece of fabric that came in your kit that has the fusible interfacing on the back. Just a quick reminder, it feels a little stiffer and you can definitely tell the difference. So what we wanna do is take that waist measurement and transfer it to the waistband piece with some seam allowance. So what we wanna do is first add two inches of seam allowance. Now I'm gonna mark this in pen, you guys, so that you can see it, but when you're working at home, do it in chalk. This is just in pen for the video. So I'm going to start from one end and mark a two inch seam allowance. And like I said, it would be the same for you guys at home. Just go ahead and mark it with your chalk. I wanna make it easy for you to see. So you've got a two inch seam allowance. Then we're gonna go ahead, I'm going to measure 26 inches for this. Okay, give myself a mark. So go ahead and we're gonna transfer 26 up here. and connect those lines. Okay, so on the other side as well, we'll add a two inch seam allowance. Now we can go ahead and cut the excess off. So now we've got the waistband cut to your waist measurement with a two inch seam allowance on each side. So the waistband is going to become something that we fold. We're gonna add seam allowance and it's gonna be a three quarter inch waistband. So you wanna make sure that you've got the correct measurements and lines on this piece to get that started. So the first thing that I'm going to do is mark a center line. So this piece is three and a half inches. Oh math. So three and a half inches in half is one and a half and a quarter. So that's one and three quarters. So go ahead and mark one and three quarters, which is our center. You wanna make sure you have beautiful, straight, even lines here, guys. Okay, so I'm just gonna fold so I can show you that that is the middle line. So that's the top of the waistband. So, since we're making a three quarter inch waistband, we're gonna go ahead and mark three quarters of an inch from that center line. So, take your ruler, you can Mark three quarters. Do the same thing on the other side from the center. So now you've got your center line, three quarter, three quarter. So, on one side, you're going to now add a half inch seam allowance, the other side three quarters of an inch. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark a half inch away. Okay, so half inch on one side, flip it over, and now we're gonna mark three quarters of an inch on the other side. One of these will attach to the right side of the waistband, the other will fold inside and clean finish our waistband. So three quarters of an inch.
All right, so now we can trim away our excess. So our finished measurement here, once we cut, is going to be three inches total. So go ahead and cut off the excess here. Okay, so the last step in preparing our waistband. We're gonna do something called thread tracing. So what thread tracing is, you can do it by hand or with a very long stitch on your machine, whichever you're more comfortable with. What I'm gonna do is by hand. So you wanna grab a hand needle and a contrasting thread color. Thread tracing allows us to see a line on the inside as well as the outside, and we're gonna use a contrasting color so that we can very easily see that line. So all you need to do is go ahead and start from one end, single thread, about a quarter inch between each stitch, and we're gonna do a straight stitch all across the center and the top of our waistband. So if you can look here in our center, about a quarter inch, a nice clean line, this will help us when we are sewing the waistband together, folding, pressing. Obviously, we have our chalk mark on this side, which I'm doing pen for you guys. But you can see, we can easily find the center of the waistband now with this contrast color straight stitch. So go ahead and continue that all the way down the length of your waistband. For the fixed waistband, we want to remove the exposed elastic. So what we're gonna do is find one end of the chain stitch that easily pulls. So try both ends. So you're just gonna go ahead and find that thread and remove that piece of elastic. So we've removed the chain stitched elastic and here is the sunburst pleating without the elastic attached. So what you'll notice is that obviously the pleats create some volume and gathering. We want to make sure when we sew the skirt together that we don't pull the fabric because we want to keep a lot of that volume. The more ease you have at the top. So ease is this idea of taking fabric and slightly gathering it into the waistband so that we don't lose a lot of this volume. If we pull, you can see how it starts to kind of come apart. So what we're gonna do is shirring. We are going to slightly pull that thread to evenly create gathers or shirring to ease into our waistband so that we keep some of that volume at the top. So we're gonna take this to the machine and I'm gonna show you guys how to shirk. So we're going to add shirring to the, to the body of the skirt. Make sure at home you use a very long stitch on your machine. It will make it easier to pull the shirring across the stitch. So go ahead, take your time. You don't wanna pull the thread so hard that it breaks because you have to start over. So just gently pulling across. So as I'm shirring, you can really see what this does for the skirt. It's gonna make the bottom very voluminous and it's really gonna accentuate those pleats. You can see here, how it's flattened out without shirring, but as I'm adding the shirring, you're getting that little bit of gathering and fullness. So we wanna evenly distribute these throughout the skirt. So what I'm gonna do now is pin one end to the outer edge of our seam allowance. And then I'm going to pin the other end as well. We want to make sure that near this side seam, we don't have a lot of shirring because we're going to insert the zipper and it can get a little too complicated. So towards the front here, 
Try to keep it very minimal to no shirring at all. And we're just gonna work both ways towards the middle, evenly distributing until the skirt panel flatly sits the same length as our waistband panel. So now as you can see, my waistband piece and the skirt panel are the same length and we've evenly distributed that shirring along that length with the two inch seam allowance. By adding this evenly distributed shirring, it's not gonna add any bulk to the waist of the skirt, but it's gonna evenly give you a beautiful flowy edge at the bottom. So make sure these are nice and even all the way across. We wanna be sure that our side seam falls in the valley of the pleats. So the valley is the inverted part of the pleat. So it goes inside and the peak points upward. So in some other spots, you've got your peak, peak, and the valley is inside. So we wanna make sure as we are preparing our side seam that within that two inch seam allowance, we place the side seam in a valley on the correct side. So I'm lining this up with my waistband and you'll see here that if I line up my two inch seam allowance perfectly, it's falling in the valley. So this will be our side seam in the valley. We wanna do the same thing on the other side. So I'm gonna put a little chalk indication there just as a reminder and then I'm gonna to move to the other side. If you need to adjust your shirring or your seam allowance a little bit to make sure that both sides are in the valley, that's totally fine. You can figure that out within your shirring. So I'm just gonna line up my other side. And I notice here that, I'm gonna hold this up just to show you guys. This side as well falls in the valley of the pleat. So this is our side seam. This worked out perfectly. We can go ahead and attach the two together. So remember, the side of your waistband that you're attaching to the skirt has a half inch seam allowance. So go ahead and pin those seams together. So the waistband and the skirt are pinned together perfectly. We're gonna go ahead and bring this to the machine and stitch them together. So now we can go ahead and sew the waistband to the skirt. So we've reached the invisible zipper sewing part of the skirt. I want to show you guys a sample of a finished invisible zipper, which will help you understand the steps that we're going to take to get to the finished product. So the reason it's so important for us to get in the valley of the pleat is because you see, this is actually where our zipper is placed and it disappears within that seam. So I'm just going to open this up and show you guys so you can barely see it. Now sewing the invisible zipper takes a few steps, but pay close attention and I'm gonna really simplify this for you. So we can put our sample aside. Now we've got here is our valley at our two inch mark on one side. So here's the invisible zipper. So the invisible zipper placement is actually going to fall one quarter inch below our thread trace line. So that's the head of the zipper, which is this uppermost point. I'm gonna drop it one quarter inch below the thread trace line on our correct side seam. So you could see the thread trace here. 
that zipper head will be one quarter inch below. Okay, so from that thread trace, I'm going to mark eight inches down. I'm going to put a tiny chalk mark off into the side seam. I'm actually gonna do this with a pen for you guys so you can see exactly what I'm doing. But you can mark yours in chalk. So you see I've got a mark that is eight inches from the thread trace line down on our side seam in the valley. We're gonna go ahead and do the same thing on the other side, eight inches down on our side seam. off into the seam allowance. So you could see here, I just have a little indicator that is eight inches. All right, so, so for the invisible zipper, we sew one side, complete that, and then we repin the other side to finish it. So I'm going to show you how to pin the first side. So follow along. So here's my skirt. I'm going to open my zipper all the way. Now I'm going to flip it so you can see here I've got the zipper upside down on the skirt and I'm lining up in my valley the edge of that zipper so the teeth are touching the valley on my seam the top of the zipper will fall one quarter inch below our thread trace line. And I'm gonna go ahead and very carefully pin the zipper all the way down my side seam in the valley. So take a quick look at how this is pinned together. So you can see the zipper will, once sewn, will flip inside and will sew the other side. So just take a quick look. And now we'll sew one side of the zipper. Okay, so you wanna take your time putting the invisible zipper in. We've got everything properly pinned, but what I want you to take note of is how our zipper aligns under the zipper foot. So if you notice that the invisible zipper sort of folds back and the zipper foot has a little notch in it that will help fold that back and your stitch goes almost underneath the zipper teeth. So we'll get started and show you what that looks like. So as you're nearing the end of your zipper, you won't be able to sew over the zipper head. So what we're gonna wanna do is lift our needle very gently, lift the foot, Grab the head of the pull. Pull it through. Reposition. Now what I like to do is a little back stitch just to make sure that everything's in place once again at that point. And then we can and then we can finish off the zipper. So with one side of the invisible zipper successfully sewn on, I'm gonna show you guys how to 
put the other side on as well. So I've turned the skirt so you guys can see it laid out as if you were looking at it. So what we want to do now is take the side of the invisible zipper that's not sewn and we're going to bring that over to our other side seam where we have our chalk mark. The, this is called the zipper tape. So the tape is going to go towards our other side seam. So I'm going to pick this up. Bring this over. I'll do a little adjusting here. With the tape towards the seam allowance and the stopper a quarter inch down from our thread trace, we're going to go ahead and pin the other side right into the valley. So we've got our other side of the zipper in place. We're gonna go ahead and stitch that the exact same way. So with your zipper sewn in place, what you can do now at your machine is pin the remainder of the side seam from the end of the zipper down. So all you wanna do is make sure that zipper end is away from the seam. You're gonna turn and I've pinned down the remainder of the valley. So starting from where our zipper finished, I'm going to sew directly down. And as you pin, make sure you are in the valley on both sides of your fabric. So with the invisible zipper beautifully sewn in, we're gonna flip this inside out and trim the seam allowance to a half an inch. So now with the zipper sewn in, we're ready to finish the waistband. So I wanna show you guys a detail shot of this, so I'm gonna do it at the machine. So as you take a look, our waistband is still open. We have a few steps. The first thing we wanna do is fold back that half inch seam allowance at our zipper. You can see inside as well. Okay. So now you're folded on your half inch seam line. We've got our thread trace line. We're going to fold down. I'm going to flip it the opposite way. And then on our stitched half inch line. I'm going to go ahead and pin this and then I'll explain it to you guys. So I'm going to fold this under. And this is how we will clean finish the inside of the waistband. So I'm going to pin it on the right side. Following that thread trace. Now I'm flipping over so you can see that the inner waistband where it folds drops down about a, a quarter inch below the seam on the outside so that we make sure we catch this edge as we're sewing. So go ahead and continue pinning. Take your time with this. Folding on the thread trace, pinning on the correct side. So as you reach 
the other side. Again, we are folding back on the half inch line. Then we're folding down on our thread trace and tucking our seam allowance in and under. Finishing up our pins. I'm going to flip this over so you can see the reverse again. And then we're going to stitch in the ditch all the way around. So we're aligning our needle right in between the seam of the skirt and the waistband. A stitch in the ditch hides the stitch and secures the waistband inside. So as I sew it, I'll flip it over so you guys can see. So as you're coming to the end, you want to make sure that you finish your final back stitch before the zipper teeth. You don't want to go over that because the zipper will no longer close above the waist. So just take your time near the end. We're stitching all the way to towards the edge. As we get near, we're going to back stitch. You can see that that's, that stitch is hidden in the seam. We flip to the other side, and this, this entire stitch has been caught. And we can clean up our thread. So the last thing we want to do to finish our waistband is close the area right here at the top where it connects. So I'm pinning it in place. Turning it to my right side, and I'm just going to put a stitch near the very edge to close that portion of the waistband. Now we're gonna go ahead, finish the skirt with a hook and eye, and it's all done. Okay, so the skirt is nearly finished. We just wanna add the hook and eyes at the top of the waistband. So, if we're gonna check these out. So your hook and your eye. I've already started sewing them on so that you could get a closer look as to how they go together. So with our zipper at the top, what happens is we come down a tiny bit, your hook and eye links, and that secures your zipper in place. It gives you a little extra stability so you're not relying solely on the zipper to hold the skirt together. So if we're wearing the skirt, your zipper is on your left side. So your hook is on the front and your eye is on the back. So I'm gonna turn this towards the camera here so you guys can see. What you wanna do is catch inside of the two rings on each a couple times. I would go through about three to four times on each side and try to hide that thread within the interior of the waistband so that you're not seeing the stitches on the outside. You can kind of then slide through. And another three, four, five stitches to secure it. I like to use a double thread for this. So you're threading your hand needle twice and securing it with a knot at the end. So go ahead and sew those on. Already completed the back. And your skirt is beautiful and complete.